I'm Mrs. Walker, Janelle Walker, and I'm in the first grade classroom today. I'm teaching reading from the Bob Jones reading curriculum. We are on lesson 116 today, um, and it's called, well, it's the second half of the story, but we'll be starting at the God Shelf. All right, good afternoon, first graders. Before we start our story today, we're going to go over a sound that your teacher has been working with you this week. Okay, it's right up here. Does this look familiar? Nod your head yes. if it does. Just nod your head. Thank you. You got A U and A W. And someone raise your hand and tell me if they make the same sound or different sound. Harper. They make the same. They make the same sound. Do you agree with them, June? They do make the same sound. So if I said faucet, which has an A U and straw which has an A-W, does that sound the same, Taylor? Yes. Faucet and straw. Even though they have two different letters, they sound the same. And then you have paw and autumn, and you've been doing this chart all week, right? So I'm going to give you a pop quiz. Not really, it's not graded. I'm going to read some words, and you need to listen for the ah sound. Not all the words are going to have an ah sound. So if you hear the ah sound in a word I say, I want you to touch your nose. That's it. Just touch your nose. And then I'll tell you to put your hand back down. Now, don't touch your nose just because your neighbor is touching your nose, their nose. Make sure you only touch it if you hear the ah sound. Remember, not all of the words will have an ah sound. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. The first word is ball. Good. I see everyone touching your nose. Nose. There you go. Ball has the ah sound, doesn't it? How about claw? Claw. Very good. I see most of you putting your hands, your fingers on your nose. Claw has the ah sound. How about, put your hands down. Okay, so you're being checked out for the day. Get your stuff together, please. She's leaving early. Oh, sorry, you have to leave early, Hazel? It's okay. All right, are you ready for the next word? Hands down. The next word is soup. Soup. Oh, good job. I don't see anybody's hand on their nose. I didn't hear any aw sound in soup, did you? No. I heard an ooh sound, but not, not an aw sound. Okay, here's another one. Clown. Clown. What some of you are thinking, clown has the ow sound, doesn't it? But not the aw sound. So that tricks a couple of you. That's kind of close, but not the aw sound. All right, how about this one? Straw. There you go. You were ready for that one. It's, it's, they have that up there, don't they? All right, put your hands back in your lap. How about the word wig? Wig. Good job. I don't hear the all sound in wig. Okay, one more. Jaw. Jaw. Okay, good. You should have your finger on your nose. Ah sound is in jaw. Good job. You guys did excellent with that. I can tell that your teacher has been going over that with you every day. And you know what else your teacher told me? She says that you guys are the best class in this whole school. Now, I, and I believe, now I normally teach older kids, so I'm gonna see if she's correct. And she says you're the best class in the whole school, so I'm really excited to teach the best class in the whole school. Okay, before we start and turn to our, our story, let me go over your service word. Okay, like a sight word. The word is Christian. Raise your hand if you've ever heard the word Christian before. Okay, a lot of you have heard the word Christian. Where have you heard the word Christian, Abigail? In church. In church. Is that where you guys have heard the word Christian in church? Oh, look, at he's pointing to Christian on his shirt because it says Rocky no, by Christian School. That's not and, oh, that. raise your hand if you have a question. And in the word Christian, I see a really important word. Anybody want to guess what important word I see in Christian? Taylor? Christ. Christ. Is that 
that what you were going to say, Piper? Yes, the word Christ is in the word Christian, and that stands for Christ is another name for Jesus Christ, and, and Jesus Christ is who we worship in the Bible, right? And so a Christian is a Christ follower. Christians follow Christ, right? So if you are a Christian, you follow Christ. If David's a Christian, he will follow Christ. If Piper's a Christian, she'll follow Christ. Same with June and Edison and the rest of you. Okay, so you started a story yesterday about a young girl, and let me see if you can remember what her name was. Let's, we're going to do a few review questions. What was her name, Hannah? Good job. That's kind of a hard word. When I looked at that word, I wasn't totally sure if you guys were going to be able to pronounce it. But you you did a really good job, Yoshiko. And does anybody remember what country Yoshiko was from? Edison? Japanese. She's Japanese from Japan. Very good. Is Japan over here by the United States? No. no. We're right by Asia. It, good. More it's it's hard. More. It, well, it's in, it's over on the edge of Asia, and there's a whole big ocean right in the middle between um, the United States and Asia. And so Japan is actually an island over there at the end of Asia. So Yoshiko is from Japan, and um, she started taking some lessons. Does anybody remember what kind of lessons she started taking, David? Um, Indo Kendo lessons. What is kendo? Anybody remember what? Okay, David, go ahead and tell me. What's kendo? Um, it's like karate. It's a, I, I read that it's kind of like um, with little uh, plastic swords or, or sticks or something like that. Oh, I it's think. like um, they use sticks, but it is kind of like karate. <gasps> yes. And <laughs> how many of you, raise your hand, do you take any karate lessons? Does anyone in here take? Edison does, Abigail does. Okay, good. So you kind of have an idea maybe what kendo is like. And so she started taking kendo lessons. And there was something that the kendo teacher made her do every time, and made all of the kids do every time they went in the classroom. Piper, do you remember what that was? They bow to the god shell. They bow to the god shell. What is a god shell? Macaulay, what's a god shell? We see it at the top of that page. Do you remember what's a god shelf? Do you know what a shelf is, Miss Harvard? What's a shelf? You, you can put things on it. Can you point to that in this classroom? Is there a shelf in this classroom that you see? Yeah, there's a shelf right over there, right? So it's a shelf, but it's called the god shelf. And what do they put on this god shelf, Abigail? Ah, they put false gods on it. We call those idols, right? Little images of their gods. And so every time they went into the kendo classroom, they had to bow to those false gods on the god shelf. And so we're going to talk today. We're going to finish this story and find out how Yoshiko felt about that and, and maybe how her mind was changed about bowing to those gods on the god shelf. So go ahead and open up your books to 123, and I see many of you are already there. You guys are really, really quick. Okay, we're going to start at the top where it says the God Shelf, and um, I'm going to have Taylor, would you read the first three sentences to me, or for us? Go ahead. After school each Monday, it was time for Bible Club. Yoshiko enjoyed tell telling the Bible Club teacher all about the kendo lessons. Yoshiko rushed down the road. Very good. Stopping at all after the third sentence. Okay, next two sentences. Let's have um, Abigail. Can you read those for us, please? She went past the rice paddy, past the fishing boat, past the kendo school, right to the Bible teacher. That that's close. The ch makes the k sound. So try that again. Good job. Mrs. Cochran seemed happy to hear what 
teacher was happy to have Yoshiko there, right? But was Yoshiko happy to be there? Does it say anything, Harper? Yes. What does it say? It said Yoshiko enjoyed telling the Bible club teacher all about the kendo lessons. All right, so it, it's, telling, it's telling us that she enjoyed being there and talking to her Bible teacher, right? Do you have a Bible teacher at when you go to church that you enjoy seeing too? I know your teacher normally teaches you Bible here every day, but you probably, many of you probably go to church and have Piper, you have a Sunday school teacher who teaches, and she enjoyed talking to her teacher. All right, let's read that last paragraph. David, would you read that whole paragraph for us, please? Yes, ma'am. Please. And Yoshiko was eager to hear the Bible story. Yoshiko than anything else from this reading, Taylor? Kendo and Bible. Ah, so she loved Kendo and she loved Bible. Two very different things. Um, can you say the same thing? Do you love when your teacher teaches you Bible as well? Do you love going to church and hearing your teacher or your Sunday school at church tell you about the Bible? That's the same way Yoshiko was. Um, are you when, and you're eager to listen to the Bible, um, and I want to know if maybe the reason you're so eager is the reason Yoshiko is so eager. Why is the Bible important to her? What do you think? Trini? Why is the Bible important to Yoshiko? Okay, can you help her out, Piper? Sure. Yoshiko had to worship him. Oh, how to worship God, and that's a very important reason, right? Mm -hmm. Do you think that Yoshiko is a Christian, Abigail? Mm -hmm. Do you think she? Do you think she <coughs> wants to become a Christian, or do you think she's already? She's kind of already. She's already a Christian. Well, I kind of I agree with she's you because not. she enjoys she enjoys telling the Bible story. Well, she. We don't know for sure yet, right, Harper? So, it, it, I don't think so because she worships the false god. She did bow to the gods on the on the uh, god shelf, didn't she? So, you think we're gonna find out in the rest of the story if she's a Christian? I think so. I think we might. All right, let's turn the page to one twenty-two. Next page. All right, read the first two sentences for us, Hannah. One Monday, Harper's Bible story picked up and started playing. Yoshiko had not heard of them before. Excellent. Next two sentences, Grayson. After club time, Sheila right away. She wanted to be alone. Good she job. 
Good job following along. Those were two short sentences, weren't they? But you were ready for um, that when it was your turn. Okay, last two sentences, <coughs> Trinity. You wanted to think about doing well to a friend who would not bow before the false god. They were thrown into the fire. Excellent. I see some of you following along with your finger, and that's a great way for you to keep track of where we're at in the story. Who is this Bible story about that she's talking about? about Daniel and and it says something about friends of Daniel too, right? Does anybody know what story she might be talking about? Has your teacher taught this story to you, Harper? Um Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Do you even know their names? Wow. Did you guys know their names? No. no. <laughs> yes. no. So did you learn this story at church, Harper? Uh Or maybe my, at home? My, sometimes I, at bedtime, my dad turn, ha, my dad has a speaker at, in my room, and I listen to Bible stories. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a wonderful idea. Um, and that helps you remember that these three friends of Daniel were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Those are those are strange names, aren't they? They're not They're names e that we normally hear. They're easy to remember. They're easy for Harper to remember. Once you say them a few times, you get the hang of it. All right, so in the story, um, I'm going to just tell you a little bit about the story since not many of you said you've heard it except for Harper. So in the story, there's Daniel. Well, Daniel is, you probably heard about Daniel in the lion's den. Have you raised your hand if you've heard about Okay, well, Daniel is actually not in this story at all. So Daniel's there in Babylon, but he's not in the story. He has three friends that were captured and taken to Babylon also. Their names are Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And there is a king there. His name is Nebuchadnezzar, and he's very powerful. And he likes himself a lot. So much so that he had them build a great big idol statue, kind of like the little idols on the God shelf, except way bigger. And so what the plan was, when the certain music started playing, everybody out there had to bow down to this idol, this huge idol. So when the music started playing, everybody outside bowed to the, the idol except for three people that Harper said were Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And what happened next when they didn't bow down? Harper? They were thrown into the fiery furnace, and um, then the, as the king was about to walk away, it turned back, and then he said, there, there's four people in now because the fourth one was an angel that protected them, and then... Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego then walking out of the fire. Wow. Did you, he just told us the whole rest of the story. Did you hear that? They took Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego because they didn't bow down to the idol. Grace and they threw them in this fiery furnace. And this fiery furnace was so hot that when the soldiers actually took them and threw them in there, the soldiers actually died from the heat. 